One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. Crazy alert! Japanese researchers will begin a long-term survey of radioactive fallout in forests in Fukushima. They hope to discover the potential impact on humans. Researchers from the Japan Atomic Energy Agency plan to begin the survey later this month. It will cover forests within 20 kilometers of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Most of the area has been designated as a no-entry zone. The study will include rivers that collect spring water from underground. Researchers will measure the levels of radioactive cesium and other substances in soil and water for about 20 years. Once again, Japan springs into action to make all of your augmented reality dreams come true. They hope to predict how the contaminants spread and their impact on human habitats. Japanese researchers are using an unmanned helicopter to measure radiation around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. No detailed studies have been conducted so far as aircraft aren't allowed to fly within three kilometers of the facility. The survey started in Futaba town about two kilometers from the plant. The helicopter can cover a one kilometer square area in two hours. It can fly over mountains and forests which are difficult to access. The drone flies at an altitude of between 30 to 100 meters, so it has the advantage of accurately determining the locations of so-called radiation hotspots. Data is transmitted to a computer and plotted on a color-coded map showing radiation levels. The researchers plan to compile a report by the end of the month. You know, if you watch a helicopter do a rescue, what happens? It's taking clean air from up above and blowing it down and pushing the water out. Well, the same thing was happening with the aerial surveys around TMI. The helicopter was taking clean air and blowing it down on the radiation detectors that hung below. Uh, so uh, th I agree with Collins that wh whatever came off the helicopter is just erroneous. Japanese power company has resumed construction of a nuclear plant in northern Japan. The restart is the first of its kind in the country since last year's nuclear accident. It's drawing opposite reactions from two municipalities. The plant in Oma Town, Aomori Prefecture is about 40% complete. Construction stopped after the March 11th quake, tsunami and nuclear crisis last year. The president of the Electric Power Development Company, or J-Power, attended a meeting of the town's assembly on Monday. He reported the restart. The town's mayor welcomed the decision. I'm relieved that the construction has finally resumed. OMA has been receiving grants from the central government for hosting the plant. The town uses the funds to build public schools and run hospitals. The resumption is expected to create new jobs. Across the strait from OMA is the city of Hakodate. It opposes the restart. Parts of the municipalities are within 30 kilometers of the plant. Residents are worried about safety. Hakodate's mayor says the project should be frozen indefinitely. He says the city plans to take legal action to stop it. Our city is considering a lawsuit. I want to prepare quickly. Industry Minister Yukio Edano says power companies should bear the primary responsibility of winning approval of local municipalities for resuming construction of nuclear plants. He says this remains unchanged from uh, before last year's disaster. Members of Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority say they'll examine the OMA plant using new safety standards. They say they won't allow the facility to operate unless it meets the requirements. Japan's Prime Minister is looking ahead to a fall full of challenges, and he's trying to be ready. Yoshiko Noda reshuffled his cabinet. He replaced more than half of the ministers. Noda is aiming to boost support for his ruling coalition. The opposition is pushing him to call a general election. The new cabinet was officially inaugurated on Monday evening after a ceremony at the Imperial Palace. Noda kept Koichiro Gemba as foreign minister. 
former Diet Affairs Chief of the main ruling Democratic Party, Koriki Jojima, will take over as Finance Minister. Defense Minister Satoshi Morimoto retains his post. He's the first person from the private sector to hold the job. Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary and Upper House Member Hiroyuki Nagahama is becoming the Nuclear Crisis Minister. He will also be in charge of the Environment Ministry. Reconstruction Minister Tatsuo Hirano is holding on to his portfolio. Noda explains some of the reasoning behind the reshuffle. This reshuffle is aimed at strengthening cooperation among officials of the government and the ruling parties and improving how the cabinet functions so we can better handle the issues we face. For now... Hey, Rocky! Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat! But... See? Nothing up must leave! Presto! <laughs> Noda also referred to the territorial row with China over the Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea. He said there is no doubt the islands are inherent Japanese territory, both historically and under international law. The Prime Minister noted Japan controls the islands, but he added both sides should stay calm as they try to resolve the situation. I think the most important thing right now is to find a way to cool things down, using dialogue through various channels. Noda says he has no plans to take the Senkaku matter to the International Court of Justice. That's what his government is trying to do with a territorial dispute it has with South Korea. A Japanese company has begun, has begun conducting the first ever test drill in Japan for shale oil. The substance is found deep underground. If the test proves successful, it could help ease the country's reliance on imported energy. Japan Petroleum Exploration Company began the trial in Akita Prefecture, northern Japan. Recent advances in mining technology have made the extraction of shale oil possible. Engineers first pump acid into bedrock about 1,800 meters below ground. The acid dissolves the bedrock and allows the crude oil to be extracted. Shale oil is a limited resource in Japan, so we hope to utilize this technology to increase output as much as we can. Company officials say up to 100 million barrels of shale oil could be produced in the prefecture. That's the equivalent of nearly 10 percent of the annual consumption of crude oil in Japan. The United Nations Population Fund has marked the International Day of Older Persons with a report celebrating growing life expectancies but warning of risks that come with aging societies. The fund's executive director, Babatunde Osochi Mehin, launched the report in Tokyo. It says rising living standards are creating older societies. It estimates that by 2050, one in five people in the world will be over 60. That's up from one in nine today. Osochi Mehin also warned that populations in developing countries will age faster than those in developed countries. He cited a UN estimate that 80% of the world's elderly will live in developing countries by 2050. If the developing countries of the world don't begin to put social policies in place, they might catch up with them so fast that it might become a challenge. The UN official said countries should make full use of the older labor force for long-term economic growth. He called on Japan to share its experiences as the country with the world's fastest aging population.
One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. 